What up, everyone? What up, everyone? And welcome back to another episode of the Nerd Gym Report. I'm your host, Pablo. And joining me, as always, is Mr. Brian Schultz. Brian, this uh, headline popped up a few days ago about um, Kevin Feige was not very happy about how things were going over there at Marvel working on the Pull Metal. They have a long history. Um, I'm pretty sure a lot of things that happened with the content, Kevin Feige didn't want any part of it. And so there, there seemed to have been a possibility of Kevin Feige leaving because of that situation. And they sort of handled that situation situation because they knew what they had with Kevin Feige and dealt with it and Kevin Feige is chief um, he's the chief over there he's the big boss he's the big dog and now if you notice Brian he's come out and said a few things about how certain content has been handled and he hasn't been too happy with um trailers right um revealing too much um has there been anything else kevin has uh, sort of not liked about um what's been going on in mcu uh, I, 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 you know we don't know what the hell that their retreat was about i would say the other high profile incident which i think we clearly know what side he was on it was the scarlett johansson oh Yes, yes. Fight with Disney. So the question people have been starting to ask and people have been saying that Kevin Feige might leave one day. I've said no. This, and the reason why is because I feel like there's just too much story to tell. I'm pretty sure he wants to redeem himself with X-Men. Kevin Feige is, in my opinion, it's not going to go anywhere until that is done. Fantastic Four. It has had three outings and it hasn't done really well. The third one being the worst of them. Right? The second one, really lackluster and disappointing. Very disappointing. With the Galactus Cloud. So do you think, Brian, Kevin is, I don't know if he's happy with the, the whole Bob Ch Chapek thing, because there's a lot of stuff going on behind the scenes that we may not know about. Um, but do you think, uh, uh, I, I also have to add this to it as well, um, of now, you know, him being a little bit hands off with the directors and having the directors do a their own thing is happening with Chloe Zhao, is happening with Sam Raimi. Now he's looking for an established director, right? In the hopes that we can still maintain the continuity and the, the, the and, and minimize confusion and plot holes. What state is Kevin in, Brian? Do you think there is a possibility for Zaslav is to start whispering in his ear. And you've always said, Brian, that he's going to be getting somebody from the parliament. It's not going to be Kevin. But who knows? What are your thoughts? So, yeah, so the story under the old CEO, Ike Perlman, it wasn't just Kevin was going to leave Marvel, that he was actually going to leave Marvel for DC. That's the end of that sentence, that he there was an offer on the table and he strongly considered it. Disney sided with him, gave him the creative control he wanted. The rest is history. So now the question is, with David Zaslav looking to staff up and reconstitute the DC universe and basically copy the Marvel blueprint, could he, could he offer a role and enough money and enough equity to Kevin Feige that he would consider leaving you know, now versus back then? I mean, you never say never, but I kind of think the chances of that are probably 1%, less than 5 They're very remote, I think. For the reasons you said, I think Kevin has the role he wants. He is the godfather of all things Marvel. And he's also got a Star Wars movie to play in, right? So he's, he's got all the IP he could possibly want to have fun with. 
seems to genuinely like the people that he works with. He has, I mean, we, we, you know, we, we can issue our complaints about Dr. Strange and stuff like that. And he can, you know, go to the cash register and point us to the 900 plus million dollars the movie made. It's a top 10 grocer all the time in the MCU and say, you know, me, what me worry. Right. Exactly. Yeah, so yeah, yeah. I just don't think there's any realistic way where they can give him something major that he doesn't already have in better order at Disney, which keeps bringing me back to the people that can be had are the people under him because the obvious thing you can offer them is the number one C. That's to me, like the thing that always made the most sense. Like you get much more pay, much more profile, and you get the creative control that Kevin has had. Yeah. If you get it with our library. To me, it's a no brainer. And I, I still maintain whether it's Nate Moore, whether it's uh, Winderbaum, like whoever it is, it's going to, I think it's going to be one of those people is, is who you're going to see. And they'll make a they'll make a big they'll make a big Godfather offer to one of those people. That's the only way to get him out of the big Godfather. Uh, you know, they can't refuse it. They can't refuse it because how, of how crazy. Think about what Amazon is paying for IP and Netflix, and you think they're gonna not gonna offer somebody a hell of a lot of money to do what these what, what Marvel has been doing. That's a hell of a lot of good business. But that's a, yeah, that's a better bet too. Like the Netflix contracts with like Ryan Johnson, Zack Snyder, um, it, um, who else am I thinking of? Shonda Rhimes, like Ryan Murphy. Like those were purely bets on the imagination of those people. This, a lot of it's already been imagined. The IP is yeah. just sitting there. So this is about being a quarterback of an offense that's just waiting to be unleashed. That's a better bet to throw huge dollars at, nine-figure dollars at, quite honestly, than any of those creators, as good as they might be. Yeah. Very interesting um, thought of the possibility, but... I also got to say one other thing. Mm -hmm. Let me ask you a question. How much longer do you think Kevin Feige wants to do this? Period. Like, even if, if you knew you could get him today, how long do you think DC and Warners would reasonably have him as their creative head before he kind of says, like, I'm good. I'm going to retire. Probably another decade, because I think that's how long it would have to... It will take... Um, whether he's in DC or Marvel. In Marvel, there's still a lot of unfinished business. Um, and that is the sole reason why I think he he won't leave is because he still has X-Men. He still has Fantastic Four. There's Galactus out there. There's just a whole bunch of stuff that they're setting up for. They haven't really done. Um, um, I also think he needs to perfect Disney Plus too. I mean, when you... When you yeah. You look at how much the company is betting on the subscriber base of that. You know, it, it's been a it's been a a solid launch, but it's not been a spectacular one. I think he also wants that on it. Even though you could argue Wind of Arms the the primary for the TV shows, it ultimately goes the buck stops with Kevin, and so I feel like he wants that on his legacy too. That he was a leading contributor to Disney hitting that 260 million subscriber number, whatever it is that they're aiming for in the next two years. Yeah, um, listen. Nice try. <laughs> for those people who are, you know, probing and just putting it out there for the possibility and making Kevin just either think about it or, or or really not consider it. I'm pretty sure he's thought about it. I'm pretty sure he has his own ideas on how to go about um, a doing a dc uh a universe and i don't and i don't think it would be anything similar to what the mcu is well i also think look if you're kevin's agent you want these right because like you, you get thrown that money you march straight back into bob jpeg's office so you say okay match this and give me another 10 percent 
That's it. Like that's how that goes, right? True. True. Leverage. True. 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 Yeah. yeah. Um, speaking of uh, Asoff, um, who's looking for an individual like Kevin, because Saslav and the people over there in uh, at Warner Brothers Discovery recognize that the MCU is a successful um, um, studio. Marvel's a successful studio. They have all these characters and they're just printing money, pretty much. DC hasn't been able to consistently capitalize on their stuff because of how disconnected and bad films, in my opinion, not all of them, but some of them are like, they're just not there. Um, so Brian, you know that Kevin Feige is looking for someone, A, I'm not Kevin Feige, um, Zaslav is looking for someone. Who do you, you, you said the parliament, but there's been names thrown out there. I have my suspicion that somebody is muscling their way for this position. Literally. Said, yeah. And you said um, Todd Phillips' name came up. Um, what do you think about this whole situation and, and what Zaslav is trying to do with the DC, uh, DCIP? And who do you think, um, outside of the parliament, with regards to the names that you've heard, Todd Phillips, and with the name that I'm throwing in the mix, what do you think is, is happening here? So I still maintain that David Zasoff is ultimately looking for two people, not one. Uh, the, the, the one because the I, initial the initial report was that he wanted like a CEO type, almost like a CEO under the CEO. He wanted someone with a business acumen overseeing kind of the, the budgetary decisions and the profitability of the division, because as we said, for the merger to work, they got to get costs down, they got to get cash flow up. So that's critical. But my sense is he's looking to split that role. He's smart enough to recognize that that person may not be the same person who should be responsible for the idea generation mm -hmm. and using things like Superman. So that's why I think you're ultimately, he's looking for two hires. Um, and I noticed that recently, even his good friend, Toby Emmerich, who looked like he was going to survive the restructuring, did not. He was actually pushed out as the head of the studio, although he's he was then given a production deal by Warner Brothers. So he kind of like took care of his friend, but took him out of the, the role that the supervisory role that he was in. And he brought in the guys from, from M, who were running MGM before Amazon acquired MGM. He brought those guys in to kind of run the, the uh, kind of the movie studio side, which, which now leaves Walter Hamada as the lone <laughs> holdover executive from the prior regime. And we can kind of <laughs> safely say what's going to happen to, to him. <laughs> Within the next within the next couple of months. So, as I said, I think that role, that Hamada role, is going to become two positions: a a business position and a creative position. And I think the creative position is going to be. I think it's going to be one of the parliament one of the parliament deputies. But as you said, there was one other name that got floated, and I can't and I have to think it was floated for this creative role, and that was Todd Phillips, which really threw me for a loop. Right, Todd Phillips, director of Joker, director of The Hangover. Um, director of old school and all that sort of stuff. But the report was that Zaslav wanted Phillips to have an expanded role on other DC projects. And it was kind of referenced as like a, some sort of consulting capacity, like around and shepherding all these other projects. And mm -hmm. that seemed like a leap to me, like yeah. $1 billion Joker movie in this genre, albeit for a guy who's had success in other genres, it didn't strike me as like a surefire, hey, he should now be our sounding board for Superman, Green Lantern, and the Justice League uh, when we when we get there. So that was a very odd rumor. You have the other one, which is from another story that kind of came out, you know, early, earlier this week. I mean, why don't you go ahead and lay out your argument for who you think is is kind of angling for potentially this bigger role here? Yeah, I mean, there's some some news came out um, or some rumor that Dwayne Johnson is 100% committed to building DC Universe for years. 
um he has in the past made statements regarding how much um you know he loves the dc world and now he's a part of it And now you get this, that he wants to be, you know, wants to devote a lot of time to building DC Universe. And so he's positioning himself to possibly take on that role, perhaps get a meeting with Zaslav and have a discussion. Who knows? The Rock is getting old. He's up there 50 years old. He may want a, a desk and just chill from doing all this work because he's been working hard. So I don't know how long he can keep this up, Brian. But it sounds he, very possible. And if it is, man, <sighs> I don't know, man. I don't know. Well, if it is, then we can look forward to Royal Rumble DC and we know who's <laughs> going to be winning that. Black Adam. <laughs> Superman's going over the top rope in like one, <laughs> one sequence. <laughs> Um, I, look, I, I think the issue I have with both of those names, it, it, it ultimately actually comes down to the same thing, which is I think to get where David Zasloff wants to go, it's not just about, it's not just about ideas, it's about the puzzle. You have to be able to see and connect the bigger picture together, right? Like we take for granted, and we really do take for granted, that when Marvel does one of these presentations and they lay out five years of projects, we take for granted that they can execute on those projects because they've done it. But if you actually think about like how hard that is, and they've obviously changed, you know, some release dates and there's been some tweaks along the way, but their hit rate is so astronomically high that we kind of don't even think for a second how difficult that is to like sit down and map out and then hit those marks profitably yeah. and, and successfully, right? That is a different skill than writing and directing Joker or bringing Black Adam to life. The, not saying that like it's not within the realm of possibility they could make the leap, but it is a leap for either Dwayne Johnson or Todd Phillips to become the shepherd of all of this IP connecting into the kind of behemoth that David Zasloff wants. And that's why I think you have to be calling in the parliament members first, because they're the ones who have the experience Experience. and at least have been at the table for how that's done. And even that's not a guarantee, right? That's not a guarantee for success. There's plenty of assistant coaches who get, and coordinators who get paid a lot of money to be head coaches and turn out to be complete washouts. But at least in this case, you know, it's, we know that David Zasloff wants to get Superman right, but if he wants to be the MCU, he has to get the whole Justice League right. He has to get the whole DC library. Like, you know, as an example, there's this random gestating project of Blackhawk that Steven Spielberg's been working on. Like, no offense, but like, I don't know anything about Blackhawk, but if Steven Spielberg wants to do a DC anything, why isn't that like a top priority? Like, I don't care what it is. It's Steven Spielberg. You have Steven Spielberg interested. Like, you know what I mean? Like, so you just need to be able to fit. How does that connect then to Superman and to Black Adam and to Greenland? That's a real skill. And I don't know if those two guys are cut out for that. Yeah, yeah. Um, Speaking of Joker, I think it's official now that Joker 2 is is getting made. Script exists. Sounds like Joaquin has signed for a boatload. I mean, yeah. Bolo. He he can go. He can go. He can go make his little indie films and win Oscars. You know, for those for a long time now. Yeah. yeah. Um. They made it happen, Brian. We we I think we probably discussed in the past that we didn't think that this was a possibility because we didn't see um, where the Joker goes from this initial movie that came out that it made a billion dollars. Can it repeat? Um, that sort of uh, run and success as the first one. Um, to me, this script, this movie has to be something um, obviously way better than the first one, but that's hard. You know, uh, do you see, Brian, that, uh, 
that sort of um, success again? And um, does this movie have to be not more of the same, but um, something totally different, perhaps in tone? I don't know. What, what, what would you expect out of a great Joker 2 film? Well, I think there's there's two tracks here that one is very obvious and then one is the the more likely but the TBD look the very obvious one is Batman, right? I mean, if you want to if you want to if you just want to make money and one up the first one, Batman's in this movie. For real. Not not kid Bruce Wayne, like Batman Bruce Wayne is in this movie. I don't think that's going to happen, but you know, if you if you got word that Pattinson was like, "I'll I'll, I'll line up opposite him in a supporting role for this movie. Okay, I think we, we can lock the billion dollars in again. And is R-rated? We'll, we'll lock the billion dollars in. We get our R-rated Batman that way. Not happening. What, we, what we've heard that I think is actually in some ways a smart choice, but it is a risk, is that if you view the first Joker as breaking the mold of comic book genre, to some degree to create this anti-hero character study of Arthur Fleck. The pitch for the second one is we got to break another genre. We got to go in a completely different direction. Joaquin has to reinvent Fleck in the, at a later point in his, a more established point in his career. And we've got to ride with that. That could work. That could bomb, right? That's definitely like a you you know you, you have to have your finger on the pulse of the audience. Like like if I said to you, this one is going to be Joker as sort of an insane Al Capone in a sort of crime genre movie. Does that get you in, more interested? Like I don't, I'm just trying to I'm trying to throw something else out that like how do you make it Joker centric? How do you not put Batman in here? but make it different enough that people want to see this again. Because I think if you just run it back, the movie makes money, but it'll make less money, almost for sure. Yeah, yeah, I agree with you. I agree with you. Um, and our final topic. Oh, I did also want to say, uh -huh. I do think an X factor here is, are you getting the fully committed Joaquin Phoenix you got for the first one? I have to ask the question because this guy is the ultimate like actor artiste yeah. and he's never done anything like this, right? He has never taken rumored $50 million pay upfront paycheck to do this. So he's doing this for the money. And like, this is a guy who's never done anything for the money as far as I can tell in his career. Yeah. Are we sure we're getting a redefined new ground performance for the Joker, or is he kind of been like a gonna, is it gonna show a little bit that he's taken, taking the money? And, is he gonna Jennifer Lawrence's joint? You're gonna mail it in a little, right? Is he gonna mail it for a guy of his talent? Is he gonna mail it in a little bit because he, he's like, man, it's just, I can't refuse this money. I gotta fund the projects I really wanna make and I can give you two hours of job. I gotta ask the question because the movie doesn't work if he's not a level up from the Academy Award winning level he was at before, which is a big ask. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, that. Yeah, I mean, it's a good question, and yeah, that money. Um, if he's into doing the indie films and he wants to do his own thing, and he needs the money, this is the way to do it. Will he give the same, uh, uh, a better performance, or uh, or the the performance that Joaquin Joaquin Phoenix usually gives, and it, which is usually great. Um, and again, you've mentioned. He's never done this before. He's never done a sequel to a movie. And, and the, what kind of, but is this going to be a big budget? I don't know. This is going to be uh, roll the dice and see what happens. Um, That's a great question because the original budget was $40 million for the first one. So, yeah, I mean, like, does Joker need special? Does it need that $150 million budget for the Joker? Oh, God, probably not. But yeah, yeah, yeah. So, you would assume the budget will be higher, at least somewhat. Maybe it's eighty. I don't know, but yeah, I, yeah. Very interesting. Very interesting. Um, and I'll find. And I just want to finally go over this uh, um, topic because it was also mentioned that um, Sasloff is prioritizing Superman. 
Um, there is some talk about um, possibly getting Henry Cavill back. And I want to ask the question, Brian, do you get Henry Cavill back or do you reboot? If you ask me, you do a reboot. If you get Henry Cavill back, you got to get somebody that's going to get the performance that he requires for Superman to win. I don't think he, listen, he was great in Man from Uncle. He was, he was, he was good in Mission Impossible. I'm, I'm, I'm not going to say that he was fantastic. He was good. Um, Man from Uncle did a fantastic job. Um, and I think he's going to require a, a, a director that's, that's going to push him to the limits to get a performance um, that uh, will do Superman justice. Justice, you know, uh, I just don't think, me personally, I don't think Henry Cavill, Henry Cavill has it in him for this character. Um, he's definitely progressed and done some good things, but I think it's because there's the right people around to get what they need from him. What do you think, Brian? Get Henry back or do you reboot? I'm with you. I vote for a reboot. Um, I think... For two reasons. I think number one is I realize that as your David Zaslav, you are inheriting some franchises that are already in motion and you obviously have to respect, you know, the money that an Aquaman or that Wonder Woman has already made. So you're not gonna you're not gonna just put them out the pasture. But at the same time, I don't think you should be going out of your way to keep running back the same cast and the same characters that you, that the prior regime was trotting out. I think you kind of only get one true reset button as the new boss. And and this is it. And I I say that kind of sadly, because I I do, like I said, I say that not because I don't think Henry Cavill could do the role ever again. I think it's just, we're going to look back and say Henry Cavill was the lost Superman. That's how I think of him. He's the Superman who could have been and we never got the chance. But I think you also have to look at the practicality of, you know, when you say Superman is a top three IP worldwide, that automatically to me says, whoever is playing Superman has to be able to play that role for 10 years or more, comfortably, comfortably. And Henry Cavill is now 40. Like if you go to camera and he put him back on, he's gonna be 40, 41, 42, like, Henry Cavill, as fit as he is, like at 52, at 52, 53, is he, is he the, the, the image of Superman you want to convey to the world when Justice League is finally ready to roll? I, I just don't think so. And like, that's what I mean. I think you have to go and find an actor between, you know, 25 and 32 who can give you 10 to 15 years in the role who can be Christopher Reeve, right? Like Christopher Reeve in Superman 3 still looks like Christopher Reeve in Superman 1. Christopher Reeve, even that horrible quest for peace still looks like Chris. Like, that's what I mean. Like you have to have that quality. And I just think Henry Cavill's window has closed. Like that's just the reality of it. And I think it's, it's a shame, but I think it's too late to get a great decade of Superman from him. And you need a great decade of Superman. I think the only other thing I would say is I do feel like you're going to see a fair amount of trial ballooning. Like, so part of the reason I think like something like Todd Phillips name comes up is it's almost like you're floating something, you're floating stuff out there. Right. And then Zasloff gets to kind of see how people react to it. Um, and then ultimately you'll, you'll kind of settle on, on the, on the right person. Um, but I, I, like I said, I just have a tough time believing that he's going to limit himself to, one or two names and immediately pull the trigger. I think he's going to do a little due diligence on this one before he puts that person in place. Um, and I would still be kind of surprised if it winds up being a somebody like a Todd Phillips, but B I'd also be surprised if he wants a ton of cooks in the kitchen. Like once he makes the decision, it's going to be, like I said, at most two people, one business, one creative 
and then he's going to kind of let them let them roll. They'll answer to him, but he's going to kind of let them roll with it. See where we go. Shout out to BlackRock three one six. He had uh, mentioned the, the the idea of hiring two people for that role. Um, so shout out to him to bring, for bringing that up because I had not thought about it. Um, and he mentioned it, and I thought it was a good idea. And you're talking about it now, so uh, shout outs to him. Um, but yeah, that's our show for today. DC has a lot of uh, figuring out to do in the next hey next year. And I'm talking about this year. By the end of this year, they gotta have this figured out. I'm I'm hoping that they're they're obviously we know that we're they're talking about it. They're they're, they're trying to figure it out. Um, and 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 news is uh, is representing that 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 sentiment that, that we have that you know they they're trying to work it out. Let's see what happens. Um, let us know in the comments section below what you guys think of this new DC that we'll be getting. And uh, do you want Henry Cavill back or do you want a reboot? I know some of you out there that you love Henry Cavill, but hey, this is business and we got to keep this going for ten years. I don't want to see an old raggedy Henry Cavill. Not to say that he's going to be old and raggedy in 10 years, but he, I don't think he's going to be able to, 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 to pull it off and be Superman for that long. Yeah, the, the, the Tom Cruise Mission Impossible model is not a sustainable model for this. Nah, nah. Um, yeah, that's our show for today. We'll see you next time on the Nerd Gym Report.